Sharon Stewart has something of a double identity. To her three children, she's mum. But to her colleagues, she's Lieutenant Colonel. For over 20 years, she served as a nurse in the Territorial Army and has recently returned from Afghanistan. It's really tough. We train hard. We have lots of clinical training, lots of military training. We're a soldier first. So what do your, your children think of mum? Um, I think they think I'm a bit crazy. Um, I think, you know, it was a very confusing time when I told them about the fact that I was going to Afghanistan. They'd ask questions like, Mum, are you going to die? You know, you know, is that going to happen to you? And, um, you know, those were very difficult questions for me to answer because whilst I wasn't on the front line, obviously Afghanistan, you know, does have its dangers for, for a nurse. Would you say war is a... A godless place? No, it isn't. God is there. You know, at times I found it really difficult, um, you know, particularly when I'm dealing with, you know, soldiers who have lost their limbs and when we had to treat children who were caught up in warfare. And I think that was probably one of the hardest things for me, really. And um, when you have a child to care for, you know, through no fault of their own who's injured, you know, you do question your faith. You do question, you know, God, why are you letting this happen? Um, I had a situation where I had a young girl who came in. She was probably about five, and um, unfortunately she didn't make it, and I had to stay with her throughout the night and um, until she finally passed away. And just seeing her tiny hands, and I was really scared. I was really frightened because I thought, I've never seen a child die before, you know. And I think because I've been questioning God all the time, the first thing that came into my head was to say the Lord's Prayer. And that gave me real strength. And it was at that time that I actually knew God was with me. I witter quite a bit. <laughs> and I'm always talking to him upstairs and just kind of, look, God, please, you know. I remember looking at my hands and saying, please give me strength, you know, to, to do what, you know, that, what I can really. So you were celebrating Mothering Sunday. Uh, what does yeah. your mum mean to you? She means a lot, yeah. Um, obviously with all that she does with the nursing and stuff, it makes us all very proud of her. It's like someone else always needs her slightly more than we do, so we're all right to give her up for a few months hey, for someone else. Mommy. Only for a few months, sir? So. Yeah, only for a few months. I don't think I could you know, up any longer, to be honest. You've done such good work that uh, you're getting an award. <laughs> it's the associate of the Royal Red Cross and um, it's um, an amazing award to, to be honoured to receive really. Whilst my name is on the award, I do acknowledge that it's a team effort that makes it out there and I can put my hand on my heart and say that, you know, everyone had the guy in the stretcher as their first thought and gave the best care in the world to that guy.
Our next hymn is based on the Magnificat, Mary's hymn of praise, when she discovered she was going to be the mother to God's son. And with the school choir competition just around the corner, it's rather apt that we hear from one of the finalists from last year's competition, St Edmund's Hindhead. I bet they make their mums proud. Jean Martin has been a music teacher and a church organist for many years. But when she auditioned for Britain's Got Talent last year, no one could have predicted what was going to happen. Brilliant! <laughs> I didn't go in it to win, Salad. I just went in to take part. I think it's the taking part that counts. And there were 3,000 people in the audience. You've got your name on your keyboard behind you. That's in case I forget who I am. Brilliant. I don't know your surname. Could you move over slightly? Oh, it's Jean Martin. <laughs> and the judges, uh, they didn't know what to expect, did they? No, they didn't. I thought, well, I've got to sort of hit them in the eyes kind of thing with the music um, and, and make them sit up. So I played the four bars of Chopin's revolutionary study. I went... <laughs> And their eyebrows all shot up. David Hasselhoff leaned back and Michael was frowning and Amanda was sort of <laughs> staring straight. And then, of course, I went... <laughs> My face shows the joy and the love of, of music. But you do have an amazing uh, ability. I've only spent little time with you now, but I've <laughs> smiled constantly. <laughs> I think it's because if you're happy within yourself, you can portray that to people. And I think people pick up, if they know you're a Christian as well, people mm. pick up on that. Oh, they'll say, you're a Christian, aren't you? And I think, well, my mum's done that for me. So. <laughs> How important was your mum to you? She gave me my life, she gave me my career. The love of music and her love flowed into me. It was this love of music from her mother that started Jean's lifelong passion for hymns. And I'll be finding out more after our next hymn. 